February 21st Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Leviticus chapters 7 and 8 from the Old Testament This is the law of the guilt offering. It is most holy. In the place where they slaughtered the burnt offering, they must slaughter the guilt offering, and the officiating priest must splash the blood against the altar sides. Then the one making the offering must present all its fat, the fatty tail, the fat covering the entrails, the two kidneys, and the fat on their sinews, and the protruding lobe on the liver, which he must remove along with the kidneys. Then the priest must offer them up in smoke on the altar as a gift to the Lord. It is a guilt offering. Any male among the priests may eat it. It must be eaten in a holy place. It is most holy. The law is the same for the sin offering and the guilt offering. It belongs to the priest who makes atonement with it. As for the priest who presents someone's burnt offering, the height of that burnt offering which he presented belongs to him. Every grain offering which is baked in the oven or made in the pan or on the griddle belongs to the priest who presented it. Every grain offering, whether mixed with olive oil or dry, belongs to all the sons of Aaron, each one alike. This is the law of the peace offering sacrifice, which he is to present to the Lord. If he presents it on account of thanksgiving, along with the thank offering sacrifice, he must present unleavened loaves mixed with olive oil, unleavened wafers smeared with olive oil, and well-soaked ring-shaped loaves made of choice wheat flour mixed with olive oil. He must present this grain offering in addition to ring-shaped loaves of leavened bread, which regularly accompany the sacrifice of a thanksgiving peace offering. He must present one of each kind of grain offering as a contribution offering to the Lord. It belongs to the priest who splashes the blood of the peace offering. The meat of his thanksgiving peace offering must be eaten on the day of his offering. He must not set any of it aside until morning. If his offering is a votive or free will sacrifice, it may be eaten on the day he presents his sacrifice, and also the leftovers from it may be eaten on the next day. But the leftovers from the meat of the sacrifice must be burnt up in the fire on the third day. If some of the meat of his peace offering sacrifice is ever eaten on the third day, it will not be accepted. It will not be accounted to the one who presented it since it is spoiled and the person who eats from it will bear his punishment for iniquity. The meat which touches anything ceremonially unclean must not be eaten. It must be burnt up in the fire. As for ceremonial clean meat, everyone who is ceremonial clean may eat the meat. The person who eats meat from the peace offering sacrifice which belongs to the Lord, while his uncleanliness persists, will be cut off from his people. When a person touches anything unclean, whether human uncleanness or an unclean animal or an unclean detestable creature, and eats some of the meat of the peace offering sacrifice, which belongs to the Lord, that person will be cut off from his people. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Tell the Israelites you must not eat any fat of an ox, sheep, or goat. Moreover, the fat of an animal that has died of natural causes and the fat of an animal torn by beast may be used for any other purpose, but you must certainly never eat it. If anyone eats fat from the animal from which he presents a gift to the Lord, that person will be cut off from his people. And you must not eat any blood of the birds or the domesticated land animals in any of the places where you live. Any person who eats any blood, that person will be cut off from his people. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. Tell the Israelites, the one who presents his peace offering sacrifice to the Lord, must bring his offering to the Lord from his peace offering sacrifice. With his own hands, he must bring the Lord's gifts. He must bring the fat with the breast to wave the breast as a wave offering before the Lord. And the priest must offer the fat up in smoke on the altar but the breast will belong to Aaron and his sons. The right thigh you must give as a contribution offering to the priest from your peace offering sacrifices. The one from Aaron's sons, who presents the blood of the peace offering and fat, will have the right thigh as his share. For the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the contribution offering I have taken from the Israelites 
out of their peace offering sacrifices and have given them to Aaron the priest and to his sons from the people of Israel as a perpetual allotted portion. This is the allotment of Aaron and the allotment of his sons from the Lord's gifts on the day Moses presented them to serve as priests to the Lord. This is what the Lord commanded to give to them from the Israelites on the day Moses anointed them, a perpetual allotted portion throughout their generations. This is the law for the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, the guilt offering, the ordination offering, and the peace offering sacrifice, which the Lord commanded Moses on Mount Sinai on the day he commanded the Israelites to present their offerings to the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Take Aaron and his sons with him, and the garments, the anointing oil, the sin offering bowl, the two rams, and the basket of unleavened bread, and assemble the whole congregation at the entrance of the meeting tent. So Moses did just as the Lord commanded him, and the congregation assembled at the entrance of the meeting tent. Then Moses said to the congregation, This is what the Lord has commanded to be done. So Moses brought Aaron and his sons forward and washed them with water. Then he put the tunic on Aaron, wrapped the sash around him, and clothed him with the robe. Next he put the ephod on him and placed on him the decorated band of the ephod and fastened the ephod closely to him with the band. He then set the breastpiece on him and put the urim and the thummim into the breastpiece. Finally he set the turban on his head and attached the gold plate the holy diadem, to the front of the turban, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and everything in it, and so consecrated them. Next he sprinkled some of it on the altar seven times, and so anointed the altar, all its vessels, and the wash basin and its stand to consecrate them. He then poured some of the anointing oil on the head of Aaron and anointed him to consecrate him. Moses also brought forward Aaron's sons, clothed them with tunics, wrapped sashes around them, and wrapped headbands on them just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he brought near the sin offering bowl, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the sin offering bowl, and he slaughtered it. Moses then took the blood and put it all around on the horns of the altar with his finger, and decontaminated the altar and he poured out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar, and so consecrated it to make atonement on it. Then he took all the fat on the entrails, the protruding lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys and their fat, and Moses offered it all up in smoke on the altar. But the rest of the bull, its hide, its flesh, and its dung, he completely burnt up outside the camp, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he presented the burnt offering ram, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram, and he slaughtered it. Moses then splashed the blood against the altar sides. Then he cut the ram into parts, and Moses offered the head, the parts, and the suet up in smoke. But the entrails and the legs he washed with water, and Moses offered the whole ram up in smoke on the altar. It was a burnt offering for a soothing aroma, a gift to the Lord just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he presented the second ram, the ram of ordination, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram, and he slaughtered it. Moses then took some of its blood and put it on Aaron's right earlobe and on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot. Next he brought Aaron's sons forward, and Moses put some of the blood on their right earlobes, on their right thumbs, and on the big toes of their right feet and Moses splashed the rest of the blood against the altar sides. Then he took the fat, the fatty tail, all the fat on the entrails, the protruding lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys and their fat, and the right thigh. And from the basket of unleavened bread that was before the Lord, he took one unleavened loaf, one loaf of bread mixed with olive oil, and one wafer, and placed them on the fat parts and on the right thigh. He then put all of them on the palms of Aaron, and his sons, who waved them as a wave offering before the Lord. Moses then took them from their palms and offered them up in smoke on the altar, on top of the burnt offering. They were an ordination offering for a soothing aroma. It was a gift to the Lord. Finally, Moses took the breast and waved it as a wave offering before the Lord, 
from the ram of ordination. It was Moses' share, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood which was on the altar, and sprinkled it on Aaron and his garments, and on his sons and his sons' garments with him. So he consecrated Aaron, his garments, and his sons, and his sons' garments with him. Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Boil the meat at the entrance of the meeting tent, and there you are to eat it, and the bread which is in the ordination offering basket, just as I have commanded, saying Aaron and his sons are to eat it. But the remainder of the meat and the bread you must burn with fire. And you must not go out from the entrance of the meeting tent for seven days, until the day when your days of ordination are completed, because you must be ordained over a seven-day period. What has been done on this day the Lord has commanded to be done to make atonement for you. You must reside at the entrance of the meeting tent day and night for seven days, and keep the charge of the Lord so that you will not die, for this is what I have been commanded. So Aaron and his sons did all the things the Lord had commanded through Moses. God, throughout the laws in Leviticus, uh, this one for the sacrifices and then the ordination and purification of the, the meeting tent, it keeps saying, just as the Lord had commanded, just as the Lord had commanded Moses, we're doing this because the Lord had commanded us, just as the Lord had commanded us. And every time I read one of those phrases, just as the Lord had commanded us, I think about all the things in, in my life that you command me to do. Somebody asked me recently about how, how I seem to be able to hear you so clearly. And it's interesting because I can hear you so much clearer now because I'm not fighting for control over hearing you. Um, took me a lot of years to work through that, but now that I'm no longer fighting for that control most of the time, I can hear you a lot louder. Interestingly enough, now that I can hear you a lot louder, I tend to throw more tantrums <laughs> over not wanting to do what you're asking me to do or what you're commanding me to do. Um, double-edged sword in my, in my life. So back to the obedience part, just as the Lord had commanded. So the things that I throw a fit on are the things that you command me to do that I don't want to do. No big surprise there. The things you command me to do that are easy, that sound good, that sound like things I want to do, I have no problem. So of course I don't rebel against them. Of course I'm obedient. Of course I'm an obedient Christian woman to the things you ask me to do. And unfortunately, I think a lot of people see those things. But there's so many things you ask me to do that you command me to do that I just don't want to do. I might want to choose the world over what you're asking me to do. I might, might want to choose my ego over what you're asking me to do. I might want to choose my time over what you're asking me to do. There's so many things that, that we choose over what you're commanding us to do. Yet back then you were asking them to do some pretty interesting things with the <laughs> sacrifices and the blood and um, how things were supposed to be run. And I don't know this for sure, but I suspect some of those were a little bit odd to them. And I suspect some of them they didn't want to do. Um, honestly, I keep going back to the smell. That smell must have just been atrocious. So I'm sure there are things that they didn't want to do, but nowhere in here does it say they stopped and threw a tantrum like you do, Janelle. It says, just as the Lord had commanded, just as the Lord had commanded Moses, Aaron and his sons did these things just as the Lord had commanded. And it doesn't even say they did 99% of them, just all as the Lord had commanded. So God, can we work on that? Well, you don't have to, I need to. Can you help me work on that? I want to be that person who's just as the Lord commanded me to do. I don't want me to come first. I don't want the world to come first. I don't want my ego to come first. I want your commands to come first. 
and I want my life to be lived just as you have commanded my life to be lived. I do desire that. So all the things that are holding me back, all of the selfishness that's still in my heart, please work on showing me that. Please work on showing me how I can remove those things. Please give me strength when I don't want to do it anymore. When I don't want to do the hard work anymore. Obedience is not obedience if it's only for the things I want to do, God. Obedience is for all things that you have commanded. In your son's name we pray. Amen.